And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted villain. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOP. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, it's about time. It's about time. About time now for uh, a look at the people who hate the Tom Likas show, the haters. I've got hate mail here. Lots of it. Oh, yeah, the haters are out in force. Now, if you are a hater, uh, you can uh, get in early because we're the only radio program that has the balls to talk to our detractors and our detractors alone. Now, if you're calling in right now, Dean will let you ring as long as possible. Then he'll clear the lines, hang up on everybody, and then make you dial back in. That's how it works. So remember how it works. If you're ringing now, <laughs> see, he, he just cleared them all. So, um, all right, now you can all call back. And Dean will think that you're now a fresh new caller because he hung up on everybody. The same people now, the same number of lines are ringing as before he cleared the lines. That's how he does it. All three people thought they lost him on the cell phone or something. Anyway, yes, uh, we are the only radio program with the balls talk to the haters. People who hate me, people who hate what I stand for, people who hate the show. People who hate the whole concept. Men, women, anybody. Even the very elderly who we normally screen out, we'll put you on the air. To tell me how much you hate my guts. Oh, maybe I should speak up for the elderly. If you hate my guts, Grandma, here's an opportunity to call in, for God's sake. But you have to be a hater. Moderate dislike, occasional disagreement, that won't wash for this hour. It's only the people who hate me. Now that Dean has cleared all the lines... You won't have to wait behind the sycophants, the ass kissers, the lovers of Tom. It's just haters this hour. So keep in mind, every phone line will be opened up by Dean. Not only because he's cleared all the phone lines, but especially because he's cleared the phone lines of people who love me. They love to listen to this hour of the program, but if you love me, this is not the hour to call in. If you love to hate me, it's not the hour to call in. This is the hour when the haters call in. So, um, I will just say that uh, you can start dialing now at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. If you are listening out of the country and you are just shocked by what you're hearing, we have a different phone number for people calling from other countries. The international number for the Tom Likas show, the country code is one. The area code is 323, and the number is 520-6211. I'll give you the whole thing again if you're calling from outside the United States. 1-323-520-6211. That's the number. And now let's take a look at what some of the haters are writing to the Tom Likas show. Look like a normal person. Actually, you are the angel of death. He doesn't like you. I don't like you either. You are a psychopathic, schizophrenic, maladjusted social misfit. Every word you say just makes me want to punch you in the face. 
You are the worst human being I have ever met. Tell me something I don't know! When I watch you eat, when I see you asleep, when I look at you lately, I just want to smash your face in. I f***ing hate you! I hate your f***ing guts! You've got mail. No! Sticky paws off me, you damn dirty ape. And the hate mail keeps on coming. Here's an unsigned listener who writes, Hello, Tom. I have a request I'd like to ask of you. Why don't you give a party and invite all of your ex-wives, provided they haven't all jumped out of a penthouse window for being stupid enough to marry someone like you? And then invite all of your new victims so that your all of your old ex-wives can explain to these women that you really are the a-hole that you say you are. He didn't say a-hole. The reason you have been married so many times is because most people have the galls. That's a mix of balls and gall. The galls. To think that they could change someone if given enough time. Apparently, that just simply isn't true. If you don't get help, and get help fast, the only thing time will do for you is make you an old a-hole. Your disrespect for women is really unbelievable. I'm just hurt that you have a forum to express these hurtful feelings. So many young men look up to you, and all you are doing is teaching them how to be whores and become lonely old men. They will eventually have no one meaningful to share their accumulated toys with. What do you need? You've got seven DVRs. 800 cable channels. <laughs> do you need female companionship at that point? I've got ten porn channels. For Christ's sake. Let me say before I close, thank you for deciding not to become a father. That child would suffer greatly. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. Here is someone who uh, <laughs> who claims to be an advertiser on AM radio. He says, one reason we advertise on Music of Your Life station, that's music of your death. In reality, it's music by people who've mostly died. On AM and way up there at the power frequency end of the dial at 1550, is that we prefer a demo that is stable has tons of disposable income and is desperate for customer service, so lacking today. That's all they want and are very loyal, as opposed to the flighty, flaky demo you think is worth a premium. The reps come in here peddling this crap and we laugh them right out the door. You want us to pay how much to reach who? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll quickly find out when you come to this white trash s-hole, Portland, Oregon. Which is another thing you don't have a grasp of at all. The Pacific Northwest. But that's for another day. Dollar a holler works great, smart ass. Dollar a holler is a advertising industry term to describe a cheap spot rate. You aren't so effing smart after all. Leave the music talk and discussion to us actual musicians. Not wannabe hacks like you. Oh, he's gone from being an advertiser to being a musician. There is nothing more pathetic than a radio jock coming through to the listener with this vibe that his deep, dark secret was to play music. But the jock never has the mental capacity to absorb what it takes to be able to do so. Oh, yes. Yes, it takes special talent to be a music disc jockey. You really need to just stick to what you know. Being, B-E-E-I-N-G, a creepy old pervert, effing slots, and he doesn't say effing, and avoiding paternity suits and social diseases, selling spots to a demo you couldn't pay us to reach, and shop talk. And shop talk. What does that mean? No idea. You don't have a, a effing clue when it comes to music. And he didn't say effing. So he's an advertiser. He's a musician. He's two mints in one. It's very exciting. Here's another one. This one from Arizona, I could tell by, even though you tried to be anonymous, uh, your email address has your entire phone number in here. <laughs> Subject line says, you are an ass. 
And it says here, you are a self-centered, egotistical, and it starts with P and it ends with ick. You think all the women in the world are too, T-O, idiotic to see through you. You treat women like disposable objects with no value. Indeed. There are many women on this planet that have more intellectual value in their letters to grandma than you have in your whole body of work. And strangely, you're the one who they want on the radio. Strange. I think that you need to realize that you are only there because people like controversy. And that the morons that listen to your show, don't talk about yourself that way, are only doing so because you're the only host who understands their stupidity. I hope that this letter may have shed some insight into your life. But somehow I feel this was more for my benefit than your own. And just for your own information, the only reason I didn't call into your show is because I am not your dear. Now we know the gender here. And I don't appreciate you using it in a derogatory, D-E-R-O-G-I-T-O-R-Y, by a dictionary, Grandma, manner with all your female callers. I love these women who use a big word like derogatory and then don't bother to check out a spell. How about the spell check? They've got that on email now. Give it a shot. Shirley writes in and says, Dear Tom, Obviously, you have never been truly loved by a woman in your life. You were probably rejected by your mother and your many wives. So now you're a bitter, fat, disgusting man. It's horrifying that women call you and treat you with respect. All women should work to get you off their air. You badmouth two separate words. Single parents, apostrophe S. But remember that for every single mother, there is a single father. Maybe not. Maybe he's married to somebody else. Both of them have the same financial struggle to pay for their children. Before I was married, I dated a single father and I cherished his children as my own. You act as if these children are simply a burden that isn't worth losing money over. That's true. Well, I worked for a woman simply who took care of her wonderful stepfather until he died. After her mother passed away, her stepfather had no one. His own biological child had died several years earlier. So his stepdaughter took care of him, protected him from doctors who wanted to give up on him, and cared for him until he died. You are a monster who is dead wrong to be an atheist. I personally had an out-of-body experience when I was a child. My soul literally separated from my body. (laughs) I don't know why it happened to me, but it did. Maybe it happened so that I could tell people like you the truth. You are worthless, signed Shirley P.S., you better keep making money because the only reason a woman would sleep with you is for your fame or money. You are worthless. Come on over, Shirley. I do have fame and money. You and me, babe. It's amazing. Uh, this one, uh, just uh, three lines. These are the hate mail, uh, the, the hate mails that we've received over a period of time here. Um, the subject is you a-hole, and it doesn't say a-hole. It says here, you make me stick to my stomach, you F-tard, and it doesn't say F-tard. Peons, I love the grammar in this sentence. Peons like you is who gives men a bad name among women. You can rot. This is how rot is spelled. R-O-U-G-H-T. You can rot at the deepest bowels of hell, you effing degenerate piece of the most foul-smelling S. (laughs) Love that. Very, very nice. That is the hate mail, everybody. Why are you screaming? Because I'm damn mad! Now, if you hate me as much as these people who wrote in, now is the time to call. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yes! The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number this hour, talking only to haters. The phone lines are open for haters only. If you hate me and you've tried to get through many times, been screened out or couldn't get through on the phone, we guarantee you'll get through this hour. 
because we screen out all the sycophants. Look it up. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Denise, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes. Uh, I hate you for many reasons, but the main reason I hate you is because supposedly you have all this money, fame, and fortune, and yet you're in therapy. What's up with that? Therapy is a good thing. Uh, there's nothing. You don't have to be sick to be in therapy. You don't have to be uh, insane to be in therapy. Uh, as a matter of fact, at one time, I uh, was in therapy much more than I am today. I was in three days a week when I started. Now it's once a week, and sometimes I cut it down to once a month, and sometimes I take a two- or three-month uh, hiatus. Uh, primarily, it's uh, to make sure that your good life is still good and you feel good about what you're doing. And um, Nobody I, buys that but you. Well, and yeah, well you can reason, say that. You can reason. say that. You can say that. But uh, the fact is that most people uh, in the psychiatric uh, profession do believe it's a good idea to at least occasionally drop into well, a therapist. Let me just say this. And the second reason I hate you is when you don't agree with You hate. Someone, let me understand this. You, you, let's, wait, wait. Before we get, to, wait, before we get you. to your second reason for hating me, uh, let's review. The first reason you hate me is because I'm in therapy and yeah. I admit it. Is that right? Pardon? Are you listening to me? Yes, I am. You were not when I just made my comment. That's why you're forcing me to repeat what okay. the audience just okay. heard. Okay. This is a dialogue. This is not your monologue. Do you understand? Yes, yes I do. And I, I'm, I'm reviewing the reasons you hate me. Reason number one that you hate me is because I'm in therapy, and I admit it. I, uh, the, the reason is because if you're so happy and you have all this money, fame, and fortune... Why would you need to be in? You got everything you need, and could ever want to buy, and everything like that. My my therapy uh, uh, today is a love fest. Every week I go in and talk about just how great everything is. Don't you have to? Don't you have a friend to talk to that about? Why would you need a professional? Uh, because I, I think it's a good idea to talk to a professional. I also talk to friends about things. But I like uh, to talk to a professional. I can afford to hire a professional. Oh, yes. Here we Sorry go. if you can't. Mm -hmm. And uh, I happen to enjoy it very much. And most of your boys, as you call them, will never, ever achieve the level of fame or money that you have. And they're going to very few, Very few people, very like few you. people, very few people will ever attain the level of fame and fortune that I have. Very few ever will. Uh, and so what? And so they'll wake up a better, a bitter old man like you. Well, I, I agree with you. Uh, if you're saying that marriage is for the poor and the stupid, I totally no, agree with no, you. Marriage is not for the poor and the Absolutely stupid. Absolutely it is. Uh, your state of mind and your state is for the people who don't understand life. That there oh, is more to life. Oh, so you understand life and I girl. don't. Uh -huh. There is more to life. Otherwise, you would not be in therapy. Uh, Thank again. you, Tom. Well, see, again, you have no ability to have a dialogue. You want to call in and shout and hang up. And uh, there you go. No logic, no ability to uh, to be logical. She can't understand normal thinking. It's an acronym. Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, I just wanted to see Tom. I didn't like. Uh, I, I kind of hate you for uh, the fact that you're anti-family. And uh, the way I see it, uh, you have said on occasion that uh, kids would benefit from uh, both parents being in the house. But every now and then, when you mention your parents and that one day you said uh, you didn't want to be poor or you were going to be rich because you didn't want to be like them, it sounds like you're very ungrateful for the fact that they raised you, for the fact that they fed you or housed you or clothed you or did any of the stuff that parents do. It doesn't sound, it, it doesn't sound at all grateful. At all for the stuff that they've done. Uh, my, my, my father, uh, in particular, did everything he could to stop me from getting into the broadcasting business. If I did what he said, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you now. There's nothing to be grateful for. The fact, the fact that he spritzed a little sperm on my mom at some point in time is, is about the last thing he did for me. And after that, I was pretty much on my own. Yeah, but there's also the fact that uh, family is uh, the cornerstone of uh, America. I, I, I don't family? agree with that. I think that there are good families and bad families. And I do believe that uh, my father specifically uh, did everything he could to prevent me from succeeding. I, uh, you, why would he raise you and, and, and uh, you know... He, 
Because my father, father my, because my father was one of the most petty, jealous individuals I've ever known. He was one of those people who couldn't stand people who did better than he did. And he was going to be damn well sure that I didn't do better than he did. And that's yeah, how he was. Well, that brings me to kind of a, a, another thing why I hate you. So you yeah, hate me no. because, let me understand this, you hate me because I don't appreciate my father who did everything he could to actively prevent me from following my career dream. You say, but so I mean, if I'm telling you, him, I had to leave home at 16 for Christ's sake. Yeah, but but I mean, wouldn't his story be a little bit different? Like uh, he raised you, he uh, broke, he, he worked his fingers to he the bone. Beat, he like, beat the crap out of me. He verbally abused me. He threatened to throw me out of the car when we were on the Long Island Expressway when I was 14. And then he tried actively to prevent me from getting into the broadcasting business. What do I owe him thanks for? Can you be specific? Uh, for raising you. For, for, for raising me, for raising me, raising me by telling me uh, by, he was driving drunk on the Long Island Expressway and threatening to throw me out of the car. You call that raising me? Well, that, you know what? Again, that's one side of the story. No, I mean, that's not one side. There are no, they, no, no, that's the truth. Right. There's only one side to the story, the truth. Again, uh, according to you, I mean, your, your dad might have a different version. No, well, my, no my, the, my dad doesn't have a different version because there's no doubt about what happened. Okay. Well, the other reason why I, uh, I called was uh, the reason why I hate you is because, it, to me, it doesn't seem like you're with the working man at all. It, why it not? Start, I work. Because, well, you you work. I'm talking about your tax bracket now. You know, you you, uh, uh, you of course you worked and you got rich and uh, you you know you are where you because are. Because I worked hard. Yeah, you worked hard. But it just seems like uh, not, like when you were ragging on people for, for buying houses. Uh, buying houses when they don't know what they're buying and by, by thinking they're going to buy them and then flip them to other people. Were you listening? Yeah, well, what about people who just bought them just to get into a house, who couldn't afford a house? If they couldn't afford a house, they shouldn't have bought a house. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It, it just sounds so, like it, so to be with the working man, I should be in favor of people buying things they can't afford, then in favor of bailing them out when they can't pay their bills. Otherwise, I'm not with the working man. It sounds like you're another rich a hole that just. Uh, uh, I see. So if if like, if uh, I think people if I think people should be moral, and when they borrow money, they should have the ability and the intention of paying it back, then I'm not with the working man, and I'm an a hole. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you, you're you're in a whole other tax bracket now. So if I'm in another tax bracket, I, I should expect people to default on their loans, and we should just bail them out. Otherwise, I'm an a-hole. I remember what it was like for you. When you I remember what it was like. That's why I became rich, because I know what it's like. Yeah. I don't want to be. I don't want to be one of those people. And that's why I became rich. And by the way, I grew up with as little or less than you. So believe me when I tell you, I had to bust my ass. And leaving home at 16, that didn't help either. And not having any help to go to college, that didn't help either. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think you're with the working man. I don't think you've ever been with us. So in other words, you think that what I should do is be in support of people who buy houses that they can't afford with no money down, lie about their income, and then when they can't make the payments, I should be in favor of the government bailing them out. I think that if somebody needed a house, like a lot of these people did, that, yeah, it should hey, be... Hey, uh, I needed a house. Yeah. I needed a house, but I rented an apartment because I couldn't afford a house. Not in 1988, not in 1989, not in 1990, not in 1991, not in 1992, not in 1993, not in 1994, not in 1995, not in 1996. I lived in Los Angeles nine years before I bought a house because I couldn't afford one. And because that's... The the responsible thing to do not to buy a house until you can afford it well like i said I why like should people like me pay to bail out people who don't want to be as responsible as i am this is why i'm calling in and saying that your caller should be listening to what you're saying you know you're yes in order to be with the working man i should be in the favor of deadbeats buying houses they can't afford defaulting on the loans and then being bailed out right you're, you're white collar now. Is that what you say? You're you're is that white white what you just say? Yes or no? Be a man. Are you, is that what you're saying? No. You, is the, yes or no? I'm in favor of people saving their homes and keeping their kids. No, no. But house. you're in favor of deadbeats buying houses they can't afford, and then when they can't make the payments, bailing them out. That's what but you're yeah, in favor I'm of, in, correct? I'm in favor of the working man. Something you know, why, why, why can't you have the integrity to take what I'm saying and say yes or no? I agree or disagree. 
I, I agree with that uh, people should be able to save their homes and save so, their So homes. you believe that people... Who, let me Let's start part by part. Do you believe that people who can't afford to buy homes should buy them anyway? I think people who can't afford a home should still be given the opportunity to try to get a home. That they if they to. can't afford a home, you're saying they should be able to buy one anyway. That they should be able to try to get a home that they can afford. But what does that mean? everybody should be in a home. Every, no, everybody can't afford a home. Well, that, well I'm telling you, I'm, I, I everybody, that everybody, everybody, by the way, everybody is not entitled to own real estate. They should. They're not entitled to it. Everybody can't afford it. Yeah, well, they should. You know, like I said, anybody who... Well, fine. You, you belong in a communist country or a socialist country, which this is not. This is the, this is the reason. Yeah, this is the problem. Does with everybody the deserve a Rolls Royce while we're at it, too? Because rich Does everybody do deserve a Rolls Royce, too? Who's working Does hard? everybody deserve a Rolls Royce as well? I say this is a problem. Does everybody deserve a Rolls Royce as well? I yes say, or no? I say, I say everybody deserves a vehicle. Yeah, everybody deserves a vehicle, too. Doesn't matter if they can't afford it. Doesn't matter if they don't want to go to school. Doesn't matter if they're lazy. Doesn't matter if they don't want to work. Yeah, well, I'm talking about just the working man. I'm talking about blue collar well, people. Fine. So people who are too lazy to, to come up with a job that pays more than $8 an hour, they deserve a vehicle and a house. Yeah. Well, that's called communism, sir, and I, I don't subscribe to that. So if that means I'm not with the working man, so be it. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. From Hollywood. My name is Tom Likas, and I'm the only, the only radio personality with the balls to spend an entire hour talking to my detractors, talking to the people who hate me, hate the show, hate the concept, hate the callers, hate our staff. We'll take on anybody. I don't care what you do for a living. We'll talk to you. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Troy on the Tom Likas show. Tom. Yes. How are you? You hey, don't yes, care. You care. No, you really don't. Yes, I do. But anyway, listen, uh, my grandmother, she's 93 years old, and she's scraping up the street, and she's trying to clean her own gutters, and she keeps going down the the street and then we find her at the neighbor's house and then the next neighbor's house and we're not sure what to do now my dad promised now remember my mother my are you mother, are you calling in to talk about why you hate me no i love you well don't you know what the topic is this hour all right tell me no no you gotta buy a radio ah, no and, I then, you, and then you gotta buy. put the volume louder than the wind chimes yeah. in the background see i love that about you i'm sure you do one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is I wouldn't want to wear a pair of Doctor Dentons around that guy. If you know what I mean. One eight hundred five is that one of Dean's neighbors? I think so. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Not that there's anything wrong with that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. I'm talking only to people who hate me this hour. This is Rick on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Actually, no, hello. I, I'm utterly appalled and disturbed that you would run a skit about taking callers out Lacey Peterson style. Uh, in my opinion, Tom, you're, you're a satanic monster. And you, I'm a satanic it, monster? You, you know, every time I hear that, that thing you guys do, the skit about her death and her, son, and her, her son's and her tummy death, I, I think of her in a what? photo with... I think of her in the red fraternity outfit and Christmas necklace and her sitting on the wicker chair, Lacey Peterson. I well, you know an it. awful lot about this case. Are you a stalker? There's pictures of that picture. It's an infamous picture. I live in the Bay Area. And who do you think you are doing something like that? You probably have a kitchen table made out of plywood you sacrifice small animals on. Really? Uh, well, we, yeah, we, we, yeah. we give the people what they want. If they ask for that, we give it to them. Well, you made it up and... You're the you you. That's get because it. the listeners called and said this is what we want. Well, don't you feel bad? Oh, I'm as offended by it as you are. 
Everybody at the dental res- office I work at, I'm a receptionist. We were really upset when we heard it. So you were you, all you, listening. You used to be on in the Bay Area, and you got that's probably why you got taken off because you got taken off. You're a mean. You're Is that a, why you got taken out of high school because you get taken out of your English class? I'm so upset right now. I'm. I can't even think straight. You're gonna break I, your radio? No, I'm not. I I'm. You know what? If I was in Hollywood and I seen you and you made a comment like that. I would put my frozen yogurt down and slap you. Is that so? Who is this, Perez Hilton? L- look. Listen, Perez, where, where Fidel Castro says hi. Who do you think you are putting that on the, on the radio? Well, I give the people what they want. Yeah, well, I want you to fall on top of a rattlesnake in the desert. Is that so? How old are you, son? Don't call me son. You're not my dad. How old are you, you dork? I'm 23. Who's 23? Who's and uh, you were in the slow lane in school? Is that the deal? No, I'm sticking up for Lacey. And you know what I mean. You used to be ashamed of yourself, Tom. Who do you think you are playing that? Well, you've said it. Do you have any other material? Is that all you're going to say? Oh, no, I do got other Well, I'm, I'm listening. I, you're going to have to stop repeating the same line over and over. Well, I just don't understand why you make fun of people's death. You've already said, like you're, again, you're pretty much repeating the same sentiment. But you didn't give me a, an answer. You I said I give the people what they want. You exemplified garbage. That doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? People don't want to hear that. Who wants that? I, have, I don't know anybody that wants that. Well, I, I, again, you probably know people who are like you. There's plenty. Of, there's people right now waiting for me to do it to you. Do what? To take you out, Lacey Peterson style. See, don't don't you just picture her in a wicker chair, pregnant, with a a fraternity outfit on and a Christmas necklace and. near the Red Lion Hotel and, you know, the, near the developments and you try to stuff your face with cold pizza all the time. What? You're probably one of those guys that, <laughs> or, uh, that has a board Is this Scott calling. Peterson? You have probably... This Martha is Scott Stewart Peterson Stewart. calling from prison, isn't it? You, you probably have Martha Stewart cheap sheets and you always brag about what you have. But you probably have you know an awful lot about store. interior decorating stuff. So. You probably have just thrift store goods like... You wear the same thing a minute. Um, you wear the same and you're a receptionist in a dental office. You wear the same thing a mannequin does. At the I mean, what university did you attend in order to be a uh, receptionist in a dental office? Um, actually, I'm going to school right now at Sonoma State. To study to be what? Well, uh, I'm going to be a graphic designer. Right. You're 23 and you're still in college. So what? I was gonna do. I was gonna be something else, but I changed careers. It's not about me. It's about you. It's all about me. You're just. You got bad woman syndromes because you, you can't get none. And you're probably like one of those guys. You're actually that, attending a university. Your underarms probably look like avocados. <laughs> you probably don't wear deodorant. You got. You smell like a decomposing possum. You. You probably, I don't know, a yellow t shirt that was the color of white because you're inside out and you don't have a wash machine. Well, and nobody you, likes you. You they sure have me person. pegged. Yeah, like you could really even afford gas to go to La Jolla. <laughs> so Michael Savage. Why would I want to go to La Jolla? You and Michael Savage are the same kind of people. You guys come from the same drain pipe. Is that so? Yeah, you guys are two big cockroaches on the radio. That's why you guys are on radio. This, this, it's just this stupid playing Lacey Peterson. You know, if you came to San Francisco and said that at a uh-huh. live show on Market Street, you'd probably get, I don't know, you'd probably get put in jail. Or uh, I heard something about you and Bernie Ward's drain pipe. Oh, yeah. That's that true? Real good. That's real good, Tom. You and Bernie Ward are the same shape. Same shape and size. Uh, well, I'm not in prison. Yeah, well, I don't have I don't have clothes that go on a mannequin in the Goodwill store. <laughs> Just because I'm ripping you apart. Oh <laughs> boy, tearing me limb from limb. 
I'm ripping you apart like a poster board inside of a, a pit bull's mouth and a pit bull's dental records. See, I, I are you that autistic kid who used to call it? I think you are. Yeah, I think you're a rattlesnake in a petting zoo. <laughs> yeah, real funny. That's what you should do. More. Your mama wears army boots. Yeah, well, your mama didn't take vitamins. <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones. Yeah, your your mom did so much. Her tongue looked like bacon. I'll refer back to the Bernie Ward comment, son. Look, you... Thanks a lot. Oh, come on. Where did I go? <laughs> <laughs> he was on a roll. How, uh, what is he taking? Hey, is that a tweaker? How does that guy keep going like that? He sure got me good. <laughs> oh, my God. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm talking only to people who hate me, like Amy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. I do not like the way that you interrupt people and you turn Why down Why do you the say that? Exactly. Exactly. You turn down the volume and people... I don't volume. interrupt people. Exactly. You know, Howard Stern... How dare you call up here and say that I interrupt? All right. I think your show would be more interesting if you stop interrupting and stop turning down the volume. Are you a programming executive? Do you know how to do this? I just turned... I just changed stations. Do do you have programming expertise? Anyway, it's just a little helpful hint. Do you have... Oh, yes. And what is your background in broadcasting? I'm a journalist. Bye. Well, there we go. (laughs) None. The answer is None. You come down here and sit in the chair for 20 years and do this. Let's see if you can get the results I get, sister. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, hey, Chris. I hit you because you ignore geezers. You screen out people above your age. Group. Yes, because KFI has a need for callers. We want to make sure you guys have a place to go. And with every passing year, I feel more and more marginalized by Tom Likas. Really? I, I feel like a Neanderthal in Europe with the Cro-Magnons flooding in. That's about right. All right. Bye-bye, Tom. Bye-bye. It goes the Neanderthal. Dragging his knuckles over to KFI. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our. T- There's probably some fake controversy going on this afternoon. Frickin' Frank are having some fake <laughs> argument right now on the air. Go over there. You'll be very happy, Grandpa. Yes. This is Bill. I'm talking only to haters this hour on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, you are wasting your hypnotic, overwhelming power you have over people. You I'm wasting be- it. You could be pres- you, well. You're certainly economically uh, f- uh, doing the, be- the best of, of anyone out there. But on my, by my estimation, you're about a three on a on a one to ten, and everybody else is about a minus seven. You could be up there at the eight level and stop exasperating everyone by p- by per- putting forth a positive message. I'm not here what to put forth a positive to message. I'm here to sell per- products. You don't understand. Uh, my job is to sell products. You can, if you have this, you can't, there's no one that can be as articulate as you without having the power to make a positive message. I have positive message. I'll tell you where to get a mortgage. I'll tell you where to get a mattress so cheap that if you can find a cheaper one and your mattress is free, I will, I will tell you how to get products. That's my gig. You, you can include, with your level of intelligence, with your potential, you can put out a, an affirmative message on what you want the world to become, starting with the personal... I will save that for the next cocktail party. The Tom Likas Show.